Okay, so let's see who can finish my sentence. Your health is your? Your health is your? Wealth, that's right. Your health is the most valuable thing that you've got. Now, I want you to imagine that I gave you a glass of gin. Not that I'm encouraging you to drink gin, by the way. <laughs> this is meant to be a health seminar. Okay, yeah. I gave you a glass of gin, and you drank the gin. And fair enough, you might, might get slightly intoxicated. Maybe you drink a lot, and you may not get so intoxicated. But it's gin, and you get intoxicated on that gin. Now, supposing I were to mix... Bacardi with the gin. And someone said to you, this is gin. Is that accurate? Is that still gin? No, no. <laughs> yes, but it's got gin in it. So what do you mean no? It's got something else in it. So it's no longer gin. But it's got gin in it. It's been, it's been changed, it's diluted, it's no longer the gin. Now, supposing I added Coca-Cola with that and said I'm putting a chaser. Is it still Bacardi and gin? It's changed. Okay, now, supposing we had gin with Bacardi, with Coca-Cola, with, uh, let's see now, if we added eggs if we added Samirazole, if we added um, viruses, if we added human blood, if we added human mucus, and we, if we added disinfectants, and I said to you, try this drink, would you drink it? No. no one here would drink it. Does anyone take the flu jab? No. <laughs> ah. Supposing I said to you to drink it, would you, what would you say? No. Now, supposing your GP said to drink it, would anyone drink it then? You'd what? You'd tell him to drink it. What about if he said he was going to inject it into you because you've got diabetes? No. Many people today, who are the people that actually spread the flu? Who spreads it? How does the flu get... Every, every year, the flu is spread to so many thousands of people. How do they get the flu? Who gives it to them? <laughs> You're saying the doctor. <laughs> well, that's true. You're not too far off from the truth. The people... The people that actually get the flu jab, because the thing is, remember what they say. They say the flu changes every year. Every year. If we could just dim that light down just slightly, because I can't, if possible. Yeah, that's it. They say that the flu changes every year. There's a new flu, okay? But the vaccine for the flu is produced before the flu comes out. So how do they know which vaccine to give? So which one comes first? Is it that they're given the vaccine, then they spread the flu? Or is it that people catch the flu and they get the vaccine to protect them? Which one is it? That's very good. That's very good. I remember you saying to me that you wanted to give a testimonial. At this point, you can come up and give it, actually. Because you should have given... Let's, let, let you come up and give your testimonial. Do you want to come up on the stage and you give your test your experience? You come up. This is a lady that's been to the clinic and she's disciplined herself. You can, do, you, you can use the mic there. It's, can we have this mic on, please? You'd like to give your testimony of your experience in coming to the clinic. You can come closer to the mic. All right. I am a person that has been suffering with my chest, my lungs, for years and years and years. I've been to King's College Hospital and saw the chief chest consultant there. He gives me antibiotics. 
He gives me two or three different cocktails of antibiotics. He gives me steroids in a pump which I take. It does me no good. It leaves me weak. Constantly, I have to clear my chest in order to breathe. I was in a serious state. Every winter, I am on my bed fighting for my life. I cannot breathe. When things are that bad, an ambulance is called. I go to Lewisham Hospital. I am put on oxygen with a nebulizer in it. I go home, three months again, the condition returns and I'm on a constant cycle of antibiotics, nebulizer, feeling weak. And I got to the stage where I felt my life is going down. I'm going down. Someone saw me and said to me, I know of a doctor that can help you. I didn't take it seriously because I've been to so many of them and none of them could help me. So hope was what the previous doctors have been to robbed me of. Now someone is giving me hope and I am losing hope. I do not want to go to another doctor because none have helped me. But something came to me and said to me, try this once. And I did. I phoned Dr. Ferguson, made an appointment, and I came to see him. And when I came to see him, I could hardly walk to his clinic. I had no energy or very little energy left in me. It is a miracle I didn't collapse when I got to the clinic. He didn't know it. And when I saw him, he just looked at me. And he just said to me, your eyes, your skin. And that gave me a little bit more confidence. He saw me, tested my blood, and he called me. He involved me into what is wrong with me. For the first time, I met a doctor who told me what is wrong with me. Instead of just pu pushing for the drugs in me, and giving me a false hope. He put me on a diet, he weighed me, took my blood pressure, and examined me properly as a doctor. So how do you feel now? Ha! Huh. <laughs> Deep. I am not on a bed, this is wind time up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I fly up the stairs. I go on the road. People haven't seen me for one or two weeks. They say to me, have you been on holiday? Your skin is glowing. You see? And I have so much energy now. And I feel the age of about 20. Whoa! Excellent, excellent, excellent. 20 years old, yes. I recommend to anybody there is, if we are living on this earth, we have to enjoy the life we have. And if you haven't got the health, sometimes the life itself become a burden. Dr. Ferguson, whatever ailment you have, Dr. Ferguson, he put me on my feet. He can do it for you as well. Try him. Doesn't she look strong? Life transformation, life transformation, that's what it's about.